Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to another episode in this series, Gardens of the Righteous. With myself is Sheikh Haitham al Haddad, who is currently based in the UK and is on the Islamic Sharia Council of Britain, and is also the founder of the website www.islam21c.com. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We ended the last episode continuing to talk about intentions and ikhlas and how intentions will greatly affect our status when we are resurrected. Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. As we said in the beginning, ikhlas is the essence of our existence. Ikhlas is the essence of what we should aim for in our life. We should live for ikhlas. To worship Allah jalla wa ala fa'abudillaha mukhlisan lahu al-deen. Ala lillahi al-deen al-khan. And the only way we can worship Allah is with ikhlas. With ikhlas. Yes. So maybe now we need to move to the next hadith. The next hadith. Hadith number? Number three. Number three. Three. Hadith narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. She related that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Since Mecca had fallen, migration by Muslim is no longer necessary. But jihad or striving and fighting in the cause of Allah and the longing for it remains incumbent whenever you are called upon to do so. By the Imam, you should respond. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Again, this hadith is reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim and it is again reported by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Obviously, we are not, our methodology in this series, not to talk about the narrator. The first narrator was Umar ibn al-Khattab. We didn't want to speak about his biography because we want to be focused and there is an aim for this program or for this series. Similarly, we don't want to speak about the biography of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of the believers, the most beloved person to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. May Allah jalla ala resurrect us or may Allah jalla ala accept us among those who love Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and may Allah jalla wa ala make the love of Aisha and the love of the mothers of believers among our best actions on the day of resurrection. Mm-hmm. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said la hijrata ba'd al-fatih. There is no migration from Mecca to Medina after the fatih of Mecca. Mm-hmm. Why? Because Mecca was opened or conquered by Muslims so it became what? Part of Dar al-Islam. Okay, so if it became part of Dar al-Islam, then people will never migrate out of Mecca. We will talk about this part, but the other part of the hadith, ولكن جهاد ونية. There will be jihad, and there will be niya, intention. And this is the main point related to the issue of sincerity mentioned in this hadith. Now, first of all, what is the meaning of there is no hijrah after Fath or after opening Mecca or the conquer of Mecca? Because as we said, it became Darul Islam. Now, is there any possibility that Mecca becomes Darul Kufr again? No. Hmm. The Prophet Sallallahu said, La hijrah ba'd al fath This is again part of the unseen that Allah Jalla wa Ala informed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with. That Mecca will never turn to be Dar al Kufr after it was opened by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Ali wa Sallam. And this is an honor to Mecca. Allah Jalla wa Ala honored Mecca. This is one thing. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Walakin jihad ununiyan. You can do jihad, still jihad will never come to an end. Similarly, hijrah, as the Prophet ﷺ said in the other hadith, لا تنقطع الهجرة حتى تنقطع التوبة ولا تنقطع التوبة حتى تطلع الشمس من مغربها. The hijrah in general, not from Mecca. Not from Mecca. The hijrah in general. From Darul Kufr 
or from kufr places to Islam places will continue until the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That will continue. It will never stop until the tawbah repentance will stop. And when the tawbah stops, the Prophet ﷺ said, when the sun rises from the west rather than from the east, which is the day of resurrection, which means that the opportunity for people to migrate from Dar al Kufr to Dar al Islam is still there and it will continue until the day of resurrection. This is one thing. The other thing is still there will be jihad. People will have the opportunity to do jihad. Mm. And the second most important thing is what? Intention. Waniya. Yeah? Walakin jihad and waniya. Subhanallah. What does that mean? It means that if the person was unable to do something, yeah, but he wish if he was given the chance to do it, he, he will get the reward of it. Subhanallah. This is the mercy. And this is a mercy. In fact, this is a very inspiring principle in Al Islam. Yeah? And that's why the Prophet said in another hadith, although it is not a very strong hadith, Niyatul Mu'min Khairun min Amali, Niyatul Mu'min exceeds his actual deeds. Mm. Because sometimes he might not be able to do the good deeds. Yes? But with his intention, he can go further than his deeds. And you can always have an intention. And you can always have the intention. And this hadith, subhanAllah, gives hope to everyone. And the hadith related to intention in general, they give hope to hopeless people. And they give almost equal opportunities Almost, not equal opportunities on all cases, but almost equal opportunities to all. So if there was a person who was given the chance to do good deeds, and those good deeds, like the hijrah from Mecca, leaving your place, the hijrah from Mecca in particular, to another place, you want to do that, but it is not any more possible you can still intend if you were in that place to do it. Mm. So you still have the opportunity. So you will be rewarded for your opportunity. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said in another amazing hadith of that meaning, سَبَقَ دِرْهَمٌ مِئَةَ أَلْفَ دِرْهَمٌ A dirham of sadaqa is better than, in terms of reward, is better than 100,000 dirham. They said, how ya Rasulullah? The Prophet ﷺ said, a person who has two dirhams only, he took one of them and he gave it as a sadaqah. The other person has thousands of them or millions of them. He just grabbed something and it happened that it is 100,000 dirham and he gave it as a sadaqah. Now, the word is according to what? Intention. Intention. And this is a very advanced formula in dealing with human beings. Mm. See, this issue of intention... It is not just talking about reward and akhirah. It is talking about philosophy, our philosophy in this life. How we approach this life, how we conduct ourselves, how we live in this life, and the meanings of this life. SubhanAllah, that says a lot because these days we get more and more materialistic and attached to the dunya. So we automatically think the more we have physically, the more we have, and the more we give away the better, but it's not always the case. It is not always the case. But there is also another meaning, which is, you know, now, now, management people talk about what? Uh -huh, when they talk about leadership, they talk about what you want to be. Mm. They don't talk about what you want to do, what you want to be. So they focus on yourself, on your skills. Then, after some time, they start to talk about what you want to do, what you want to achieve. Okay? Mm -hmm. Islam says, no, the main issue is what you want to do, what you intend, your intention. You will be rewarded according to your intention. Hence, if it happens that you are a person with no skills, you are a disabled person, still you have chances to what? To earn a lot of reward. Because of intention. Because of intention. 
ولكن جهاد ونيه and your niya will be as we said will go far beyond your actual abilities or your actual deeds it's not limited to your action it is not limited to your actions subhanallah and this is out of the mercy of allah jalla and that's why the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said walakin jihad wa niya obviously there are a number of ahadith that confirm the nature of islam from this perspective we will come to the hadith that says inna dunya li arba'ati nafar the dunya is divided among four people and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the first type of people is a person who was given wealth and wisdom okay so he will receive the highest level of reward mm-hmm. the second person is a person who doesn't have wealth Allah Jalla Ala did not give him wealth, but he gave him what? Ilm and wisdom. So this person is saying, had I had what this person had, I would have done what he is doing. Which means what? I will use the wealth to spend it for the sake of Allah Jalla Ala. Mm-hmm. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَهُمَا فِي الْأَجْرِ سَوَىٰ They will receive the same amount of what? of reward yeah mercy it is a mercy we will elaborate on this hadith inshallah in uh, another episode brothers and sisters please return after the break where we shall continue this discussion on the first chapter of riyadh salihin which is ikhlas and sincerity assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh upon him the floods swept the entire earth sparing only those who believed today floods of shirk floods of innovation and floods of desires and lust are sweeping the whole earth Al-Imam Malik ibn Anas of Medina said that the Sunnah is the Ark of Nuh. Whoever boards it is saved and whoever refuses is drowned and is doomed forever. Join me in Al-Arba'een Al-Nawawiyyah, the 40 hadith compiled by Al-Imam Al-Nawawi. Join Asim Al-Hakim in Al-Arba'een Al-Nawawiyyah. Every Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to the continuation of this discussion between Sheikh Haytham al Haddad and myself on the first chapter in Riyadh al Salihin, which is on sincerity and ikhlas. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Before the break, we were discussing the third hadith, which is from Aisha, radiallahu anha. We were talking about 
the intention of Hijrah. And before we move on, is there anything that you'd like to yeah. add? Bismillah. There is a lot to be discussed about this issue, but I think if we go to the fourth hadith, the fourth hadith, we can explain it and we can combine both a hadith because we really want to finish as many a hadith as possible because it is a long book. And once we read all the hadith in this chapter, we will have a better understanding of sincerity. The companion Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu has related, once we were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a jihad when he said there are some people still in Medina who are with you in spirit wherever you march and whatever valley you traverse it is only their indisposition that has kept them from being with you in person according to another version the Prophet wasallam said they are your partners in recompense okay Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the previous hadith the Prophet wasallam said no more hijrah from Mecca to Medina or from Mecca in general but there will be jihad going on and there will be niya there will be niya niya means what the person will intend to do good things although he might not be able to do good things this hadith subhanallah goes perfectly Imam al Nawi was a genius person yeah he brought this hadith and it fits perfectly with the previous hadith the Prophet وسلم, said that in Medina there are men yeah, who could not join jihad, join us in this ghazwa, in this battle. Mm -hmm. However, whenever you go yeah, through any path, you did not go or cross any valley. You did not go through any difficulty in your jihad. You did not achieve anything in your jihad. You did not earn any reward in jihad, except they will get a similar reward. Some translation said that they will share the reward. No, no, no. Because the reward, Allah Jalla has no limit in terms of the reward. So it's not Allah Jalla will divide the reward between the people who actually went to jihad and the people who could not join the jihad. Mm -hmm. No. Allah will give this amount of reward and a similar amount without diminishing the reward of those people will be given to who? To the other people. With the intention. With their intention. Why Allah Jalla gave them all though they did not go for jihad? Because of their intention. Because of their intention. So as the Prophet Sallallahu said in the previous hadith, walakin jihad wa niya. There will be jihad and there will be niya. So those who don't, cannot go for jihad, they can what? Intend that if there is jihad, I would wish to go for jihad. And they will get a reward of something similar. And they will receive similar reward. Okay. Now some scholars said they will not get the same reward, but similar. And some other scholars said, no, they will get exactly the same reward. It depends on their intention. And at the end of the day, Allah Jalla knows the intention. No one can just, yani astaghfirullah, deceive Allah. Allah knows the reality of our intention. This hadith is similar, or this hadith reminds us of many other hadith that talk about the same concept from different angles. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in hadith in Sahih Muslim as well, من سأل الله الشهادة بصدق بلغه الله منازل الشهداء وإن مات على فراشه The one who asks Allah Jalla wa Ala to die as a martyr Allah Jalla wa Ala will give him the reward of the martyr even if he dies on his bed Yeah That's why the other hadith said The one who does not go for jihad nor talk to himself about jihad he will die on a branch of nifaq of hypocrisy it is not allowed for the person not even to think to strive in the sake of Allah Jalla wa ala to do jihad actual jihad to support the deen of Allah Jalla wa ala to die in the sake of Allah Jalla wa ala in fact the more the person loves Allah Jalla wa ala the more the person likes to 
sacrifice for the sake of Allah Jalla Ala. So if the person is sincere in this intention, yeah, and he was blocked from going or from doing this good deed, in this case, jihad, because of valid reasons, as the Prophet ﷺ said, حَبَسَهُمُ الْعُذْرِ They were blocked or prevented because of valid excuse. Yeah, they will get the same reward. It shows how we really can't afford to not understand the subject of intentions and ikhlas. Subhanallah. So, now, ikhlas decides whether the action is valid or not valid. Yeah? Ikhlas decides how much reward you will get. Secondary. Yeah? The first hadith, in the Al-A'mal Al-Baniyat, talks about validity, invalidity. Reward or no reward. Or reward or sin. Hmm. Yeah? The second hadith went further to talk about what? How much you will get. Yeah? The third hadith indicates that no, sometimes because of ikhlas you will get something although you didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So this is another element of ikhlas. It's not the validity, the amount of reward. No, it will give you reward even you didn't do anything because of your intention. Subhanallah. And that's why in the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَرِضَ الْعَبْدُ أَوْ سَافَرْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنَ الْعَمَرِ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُ صَحِيحًا مُقِيمًا If the person troubles or he becomes ill, Allah Jalla wa Ala will give him the reward of the actions that he used to do when he was resident and he was healthy. Yeah? So this explains that it is not just false intention. No. It is an intention and you used to do things. Mm -hmm. You used to do it. Or when you have the freedom to do, when the blockage is removed or the barrier is removed, then you go and do. Yeah. yeah. Okay? So, إِذَا مَرِضَ الْعَبْدُ أَوْ سَفَرُ When you travel or you become ill, which means that if you do not travel nor you are ill, you are healthy and resident, you will do all these good deeds. Allah will give you the reward of these deeds that you used to do. That you used to do when you are unable to do them because had you been healthy and resident means had you have the chance to do them, you will do them. Okay? This is the beauty of it. So this is another direction or this is another dimension of the benefit of what? of ikhlas. The hadith that I was quoting in the first part of this episode, hadith Abi Barza al-Aslami. A very long hadith, very beautiful hadith. Wallahi, very beautiful hadith. The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا الدُّنْيَا لِأَرْبَعَةِ نَفَرْ The dunya is divided among four people. The first type of people is a person whom Allah jalla wa given wealth and what? and wisdom. So he is using his wisdom to use, to utilize the wealth for the sake of Allah Jalla wa for the best good deeds. So the Prophet Sallallahu said he would receive the highest mm -hmm. level. The other person was not given wealth, but he was given wisdom and ilm. So he will say, he will intend, Wallahi, Wallahi, if I have this, I will do the same. Mm -hmm. Allah Jalla wa will put him in the same level. On the other side, there is an evil person who was given a lot of wealth, but he was not given wisdom. Yes? So he will use the wealth to do evil things. So Allah Jalla wa will put him in the lowest part of the fire of hell. The fourth person is a person who was not given wealth, nor he was given wisdom. So he will say, he will intend to do the evil things like that person. So he will be put on the same level of the Hellfire. This shows, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that strive to do good things if you can't intend to do them. Because you will be rewarded the same. The same.
Brothers and sisters, please return to us in the next episode where we shall continue talking on the first chapter of Riyad al-Salihin which is on ikhlas and sincerity. And we shall also continue with intention, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe To him belong the heavens and the earth The ever living, he is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent his messengers To warn his creatures